Hey guys, it's Sam Limon back with another tutorial and this time we're going to be working on our collage for the Portfolio Builders assignment. Uh, this is for our Graphic Design Fundamentals class. So this is the project that follows the Portfolio Builders assignment, the independent uh, CD cover. Uh, so I just went right into my Schoology page and I pulled up my projects uh, list. So it is right here. So here's the information. Uh, so we're going to create a collage with the horizontal layout and we're going to find a topic of your choice and we're going to be blending images. So I put a quick sample here and I'm going to go over more samples in class. Um, so this one is obviously surfing themed. Uh, so we put that together. Uh, and then the parameters, it's going to be a 1920 pixel wide by 18 uh, by 1080, excuse me, 1080 pixel high uh, document. Uh, then we're going to make it uh, RGB color mode and it's going to be 300 pixels per inch. So to get that started, let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. So I'm going to open up Photoshop and we're going to go to file new or we could just click on create new here from the home screen on Photoshop. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to go over to the right hand side and let's change this to pixels if you don't already have it. Now our width, it's going to be 1920 and our height, it's going to be 1080. Uh, this is a pretty standard size for a lot of uh, digital content, uh, horizontal layouts and things like that. When we're doing digital assets uh, for, you know, any online, you know, banners or things like that, then um, at the end, we're going to have it at a resolution of 72, but it's always good to start off with 300 and then where you could work your way back to 72 or save it as a 72 and that way your image size is not that big so it's better to start big and then um, you have a lot more resolution to work with uh, and then from there yeah, everything else just leave it as is you know rgb color mode um, and then anything else just leave so go ahead and click create and it gives us our 1920 by 1080 size uh, my rulers happen to be in inches right now uh, I could always right click on the rulers and change it to pixels. And that'll give me, if I put it up, you could see it's right by 1900. So that gives me my 1920 by 1080. And then you could always double check as well by going to this bottom area down here. And if you click and hold down here, it'll give you your width, your height. Uh, it tells you it's RGB and 300 pixels. So that's another quick way to check. Uh, on this assignment, luckily, we do not have any bleed. We do not have any any live guides. Uh, so you're free to do uh, anything you want. So again, think of anything you would want to do a collage of. Think of a theme. It could be sports related. It could be cars. It could be flowers, um, you know, animals, whatever you might have in mind. So um, I'm going to start this off by, you know, jumping in and doing a search, a Google search for uh, fishing. So I'm going to make it like fishing and fish themed. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm going to go, you know, to my good old trusty Google. Uh, and I could also search unsplash.com. And you'll hear me mentioning uh, these sites a lot. It's uh, where I go to pick up digital assets for free. Um, and then this one was pexels.com. So I have three tabs open. And I'm just going to, you know, pick any random one and I'm just going to type in like fish. Um, so here's some cool fish. And now I'm changing my mind. Now I'm thinking, oh, maybe not just fishing, but fish in general. So that's going to be my theme. So I could start, you know, looking for some cool fish that I like. Uh, maybe this one. And I could start downloading. We got that one. I like the clownfish. They always have really nice colors. So let's download that one. So I have two. Uh, this red beta fish looks really cool. And let me go to let me go to this other one uh, on splash.com and see what they have. And you notice sometimes they have similar or, you know, sometimes even the same images. So this one's pretty cool. I'm 
just to go ahead and get you know some other colors let me download this one So, I mean, you could use uh, any amount of images you want. Um, obviously, you know, the more the better, the more practice you'll have. Um, you know, I don't have a minimum requirement on this, but, you know, don't just put a picture and slap it in there. Um, the whole point is for you to create a collage and you arrange elements however you want, you know, make a cool composition out of it. Um, and then, you know what, let's change, uh, let's, let's find a cool background. Um, maybe I make, want to make it like an underwater or a water background. So this one's pretty cool. Let's start off with that. So we have a main background image. And for some reason, this image really drew my eye. So let's see if we could do something cool, put them together. Um, you know, again, go go down the list of things that, you know, would tie into the the theme. So if I have fish, it probably means ocean. So I could, you know, put put some ocean stuff in it. I could, you know, think of coral, uh, other things that, um, that would go in with, with the theme. So let me go with shark. Yeah, like this one, that one's pretty cool. And then maybe I wanna add a boat in the ocean. And let's go ahead and download this one. I really like this water here. I'm gonna search for ocean water and see if I could find something, something similar. Uh, might use it, might not, but um, let me just go ahead and go ahead and get this one. Um, so once I downloaded a few images, um, you could go ahead and go into your working folder. So the folder with your name on it, your USB, your external hard drive. And I'm going to create a folder in here. Um, and I'm going to name this uh, collage. And then within collage, I'm going to make another folder. And then I'm just going to name this images. Uh, you could drag all your images just in your collage folder. But I like to keep things organized. So that way I could have my Photoshop file out here and then my images folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my downloads where I have all these images I downloaded. So I know it's these. If I click on one, hold shift, just because I know all of these are my images, um, I could just drag this up here. Take that one as well. And I think all of these are some images as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I could close down my downloads and I'm gonna uh, go ahead and go back into Photoshop now that I have all my uh, images. And let me go ahead and save this as a, a Photoshop document. So I'm gonna go to File, Save As, and go ahead and name it uh, Collage and put your name or put you know whatever theme it is. Uh, I'm gonna name it Fish, you don't have to, but as long as you put collage and, and we know what it is and put your name on it and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my uh, work area my work in progress folder and I'm going to find my collage folder and that's it I'm going to put it at this level right outside of the images I don't want to put it in that folder so save it there so now what I could do is I could start opening images or I could uh, drag them in that's another way but I'm going to go to file open and I'm just gonna go to images, 
go here if I do command or control a it's gonna select all of them and then I'm just gonna hit open so it's gonna make a bunch of tabs for all my images and then I could start dragging them in and closing them down as I need it now obviously if we get too many images let me make this a little bit bigger um, if you get too many images you're not gonna be able to find your first one right so if you click on these little arrows up in this area right here now you could navigate to each one of them. So our very first one was our Photoshop file. So this is our working file. So now if I go in here and I bring in this, this image, I want to bring it into my uh, collage uh, file. I go back to this one. This is going to be my background. So I could drag this one, bring it in. Remember, go into the tab and then bring it down. If you just leave it up here and you let it go, it's not going to accept it. So again, Take it up to the tab where you want it to go and bring it down into your artboard. Now my image is really big, um, so I'm going to do a command or control T to resize it. Or you could go to edit and uh, free transform. So this is the tool we're at now. Now right here, I cannot see my bounding box. So if I zoom out a little by doing command or control minus, or you could go to view and zoom out you could you could see the the bounding box so now you could go ahead and minimize this now if you see I'm, if I minimize this from the right hand side it makes it smaller that way if I hold option or alt option on a Mac uh, alt on a Windows or PC it's gonna take it down to the center um, shrink it uh, from the center so and I could arrange this now I'm going to say that looks pretty cool. I'm going to hit return or enter or hit the checkbox here. And now I accepted that. So there's that layer. I'm going to go ahead and name this water or background. Um, and at this point, I could close this one down. I no longer need it. Uh, from here, I could bring in uh, the fish. Uh, on this one, I just want the fish by itself. I don't want any of the blue behind it. Uh, so I'm gonna do a quick mask. Um, you can mask any number of ways. So again, uh, I'm gonna go with the magnetic lasso tool this time. And I'm slowly just gonna click my first point and then just drag my mouse over the fish. Uh, obviously at this point, your images are gonna be a little bit different, but you could still follow along to see uh, different things that I could do to um, to make my selection or or to um, you know give it different effects so I'm gonna go through several different things at this point so understand this is just a quick mask um, now one thing I noticed is that since that this part of the tail is blue and the water is blue Photoshop wasn't able to pick up the that part of the tail so it just kind of jumped to the next closest line, which is the white. So I could always go back and add some, add a little bit more. So I could always do, let's say I do it with the lasso tool. And then I'm going to hold shift. And what that's going to do, it's, it's going to add. So I'm going to come along this way and roughly trace this. And you could do it in parts. So see how now that added that. So again, if I just start clicking, it's going to move my, it's going to do something that I don't want it to do. So I have to hold shift and wait for that little icon with the plus sign to show up. And I'm just going to select more of this tail. It's a little hard with the mouse, but um, you know, we could always do, do this. Uh, this is why my favorite tool to mask is the pen tool. So I'll use it on another fish. So zoom out. I'm going to go to my layers panel. And at this point, I'm just going to make a mask out of this. Instead of deleting everything or just bringing the fish, I'm going to make a mask. Um, so click on your layer mask uh, right here, uh, right in your layers panel at the bottom. And I'm going to click on my move tool. And then I could drag this fish over to my collage and bring it in. And there it is. Now it's super huge. So again, I'm going to have to resize it. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. 
do my command or control T or edit free transform and let's resize our fish. So this guy could be here. We could close this, we no longer need it. So don't save. Uh, now this fish, let's say I do not want to mask it, I want him as is, so I could bring him in, just bring him in here, and let's make it a little bit smaller. So again, Commander Control T. So I want him there. Uh, so now let's name layer one. Um, I'm just going to go based off color, so I'm going to go purple fish. And layer two is going to be called pink fish. So now one thing that I could do is I could add another layer mask to this one and I'm going to get a brush. So I'm going to go ahead and get my brush. I'm going to give it a bigger size, maybe around uh, for these purposes, I'm going to do 170. Let's let's go ahead and do 200. And it is black, so that means it's going to hide. So this goes based off of uh, uh, our, our masking. So I'm going to just slowly start brushing. So make sure your, your opacity is at 100. I have my flow at 100 and my smoothing at 0%. Uh, for this first edge, I just want to get rid of that hard edge right here. So I go with 100% opacity. And then I'm going to lower my opacity to maybe about 20 percent roughly and now I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger so I'm using my right bracket keys and I'm slowly gonna like blend this in so this is gonna be part of my collage like just blending things in so notice how I'm hitting it out here um, just so it it gives it like a nice smooth transition so that's one thing you could do uh, so let's go ahead and let's close this one uh, let's go ahead and bring in our boats. Um, let's bring this one in like this. Again, it's a little big. I'm going to do Command T. I could also shrink this uh, shrink this boat once I am in tr uh, free transform mode. I could change the percentage fields right here. So I could manually, height or width, doesn't matter. I could change it to, like let's say, 50%. 50 and I could move it around. Um, yeah, let's, let's see what that does. So I'm going to hit return. And then one thing I'm going to do is bring it below, make this bigger. I'm going to bring this below my fish uh, layers. However, I'm going to put it above my water layer. I'm going to rename the layer boat to boat. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to play around with the, um, with the blending modes here. So these blending modes are affecting uh, not necessarily the transparency, but different effects, and it's and it's interacting with the water layer. So depending on what you have, um, it will all the colors will blend or you know just act differently. So I'm gonna find something that I kind of like. So maybe multiply, and then I'm gonna change my opacity down a bit. So now let's see if uh, there's anything else I like from here. Yeah, I think multiply is uh, my favorite one. So I'm going to do that and I change my opacity to 23 just to have a nice number. I'm going to do 25%. And let's see, I could also move it around. Let's go ahead and do it right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bring in, let's close this one. I'm going to go ahead and bring this fish. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to bring it the same as well. Um, let's resize it. So Command T, drag this down. Maybe I want him coming in from the left-hand side so I could right-click when, when I'm in transform mode and then flip horizontal so I could have him coming up here. Actually, I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. And let's just play with the 
blending modes here, see if we get anything that might look cool. Yeah, so let's go to screen. Uh, so this is going to be yellowfish. And then we noted, I noticed that we have these, um, you know, these lines from the edge of the photo are still visible. So I'm going to add a layer mask. And again, I'm going to grab my brush, uh, make it smaller and play around with these. I'm going to start off at 50%. Maybe for my edges, it's not as good. So it'll take a couple swipes. So make sure my brush is in black. Um, and then I could start, you know, erasing those edges. So there's one. Uh, so let's get rid of him. Uh, this one was one was one of the images that I like for the background. So let's go ahead and drop it in and see if it could affect this in a good way. So again, let me drop this below or maybe above the boat. And let's go ahead and resize it a bit. So command and control T. something like this so let's say I want to resize this only going sideways notice if I do the corners it's gonna do the whole thing proportionally if I hold shift and I could drag this and this as well so I'm skewing it a little bit you obviously wouldn't do that with somebody's face or one of these fish but uh, on a background image where you can't really tell the distortion, that's going to be fine. So I'm going to hit return. Let's go ahead and play with our blending modes. So let me zoom in a little bit. And this might work. This might not work. So, you know, this is a test. So we'll see. Maybe to darken it a little bit right there with the overlay. So that darkens it. And um, let me turn my boat down a little. So let's go turn that multiply layer down a bit. All right, so that's gonna be pretty good. Uh, let's wait on that one. Let's bring in this uh, beta fish. So let's bring this one in. Now this one, I kind of like the tail as a texture by itself. So let's try something like that and play with the blend mode. Let's do something like that where it's interacting with everything else. And I'm actually going to make this one bigger. And since I'm using the tail as a texture, if I hold shift and bring this to the side and I get this cool like wavy wavy pattern wavy effect let's do something like that um, so then I could bring up my boat it's going to give me a different effect I'm going to move it now uh, over here and I'm going to play with the blending modes again and my opacity. So I could always go back and, you know, start doing different things um, de depending on the elements that I'm bringing in. So at this point, maybe I don't, maybe I don't need the boat or it does, it does nothing for my composition. So uh, you could either delete the layer or just turn it off and not use it. Um, you know, I could rearrange these. set the fish to normal and then play with the blending modes of the water. Now for some reason I kind of like that. So I'm going to completely turn around, make a U-turn and make something a little different. I'm going to resize this fish because I want the tail to take up the whole, this whole area. And I'm going to hit return. Let's see if the boat does anything now. Yeah, 
that's actually something like that I kind of like. Now I notice I have the um, I have this line over here. I could push the boat further, but I kind of like it over here on the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again create a layer mask, get my brush, and then just start brushing with black. So the brush saves all like the previous settings that uh, you left on it. So that's why I feel comfortable just going to it and you know doing this. Uh, now you notice that this fish uh, with the blending mode it kind of changed and let's see if I can move it to a place where it'll look better or or I could just change the blending mode let's say the blending modes don't work I'm just gonna go over to normal and bring it down here Notice how I didn't get that edge of the mask, so this is a good time to get my brush tool. Again, I'm, I'm clicked on my layer mask and make sure I'm in black. This time I am going to go to opacity of 100 and brush that in. So let's go ahead and close this one. That's a pretty cool fish. Uh, let's go ahead and bring this one in. Kind of like that one too. Let's see. So let's see if playing with the blending mode does, does anything cool. Maybe, maybe screen, so it's more of a texture, or I could just leave it normal. Let's go ahead and use them as a as a texture. And have them coming in over here. Now I notice that this part is like a little dark down here so and I start seeing him and it looks to me it looks pretty cool so what I'm gonna do is go underneath that layer and I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna name this one uh, darkening or shadow uh, let's go ahead and name this one dark background dark BG this one's gonna be redfish try to keep in the habit of of naming your your layers so now darkening I'm just going to use a regular brush and in black and I'm going to lower the opacity maybe till about 50% roughly and then make my brush bigger and then I'm going to slowly bring in some black and notice how this also benefits the blend that we had done on this fish on the uh, yellow fish so maybe we could add some black there and let's go ahead and add just a little bit Maybe that's too much, so maybe we could lower our opacity down to about 10. And let's make this top darker. Um, so that's looking a little cool. And let's close that one. Now let's bring in our shark. Um, on this one, uh, we could go ahead and mask it. Let me show you with the pen tool. So I'm gonna click on P or go to my pen tool, which is right here. Uh, this one's going to be a little harder to use, but uh, once you figure it out, once you get used to it, um, you're, you're, you're going to like it. But like I said, at first, it's a little frustrating. So the way to work the pencil is you could just make points. It's hard to tell on white right now. Uh, sorry, on blue right now because the lines are blue. I'm just going to make a random color. I'm going to do a solid color of white just so you could see the pencil in action. So if I click points... And then if I get to the end, see how that cursor changes to a little circle. And that means it's going to connect this point, these, uh, these points. So then from here, I have what's called a path. So I could use that to make a selection. Um, another way to do it, to use it is I'm doing command Z to undo all that. If I click a point and then I go over here and then I click and drag, it starts making this curve. Let's see how like that 
kind of um, manipulates where you want it to, to go. So I go that way. Now if I click over here, it's just going to make a sharp point again. Now if I go here and then if I start clicking and dragging again, that's going to make it a curve. And then if I click here, you know, I could add another curve. Now let's say I want to, if I go here, it's going to make that curve, right? So I don't want that. I want this to turn into a sharp point, something like this. If I hit option or alt, and then I click this point that I just made, then from there it breaks that curve and it creates what's called a corner. So now I could go here and start doing that again. Now let's say I want to do a cutout here, uh, like a cutout, so I want to curve it this way. Obviously I can't do that unless that's what I want, right? This curve. But if I hold Option or Alt again, click on this point, and then now I could make that a corner. So that is basically how to how to use the pen tool. And then I could just connect it. And then once I do a right click, I could make a selection. And I always leave the feather radius at zero or one. So I'm gonna do zero and then click OK. So now that makes a selection. So with that quick little tutorial, um, go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and undo this, delete this fill layer, and I'm going to use my pen tool to select the shark. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'll find a point to start. So I'm just going to start here. Um, let me just so you guys could see a little bit of the pen tool in action. It's hard against blue. Uh, let me go ahead and add this curves adjustment and I'm going to hopefully this will this will be a little bit more visible. Um, this is temporary. I could turn this off and on. I'm just using it so you could see what I'm doing with the pen tool. So I'm clicking and dragging here. Again, clicking and dragging. Let me actually see if I could change the color right now um, without having to restart the program. If if not then um, if not then I'll just continue with this. Uh, so let's see, erase interface. Okay, so it's not letting me change my paths right now. So it is at default blue, and it's all grayed out. So unfortunately, that's what it's going to be for now. Maybe you have to do this while you're not working on it. So I'll just go a little bit inside of the shark so you could see what's happening or zoom in. So I'm just clicking and dragging and you could kind of see the line. So obviously if I do that, well, it's going to, you know, do that selection. So I want to pretty much trace the shark. I want to follow all the, all the lines for, for the shark. Try to get it as close to the edge as possible, um, but I'm going in in a little. It's better to go in a little than out because then you're going to be selecting this water. So we want to just select the shark uh, itself. Now again, right here, this curve is going down, um, and now I want to turn this point into a corner. So if Option or Alt, click there, and then continue here. Zoom out a little to see where I'm going with this. Have this back fin over here. So as you can see this is this tool is a little bit more time consuming, but I am getting a way better um, selection out of out of the shark. Then when I then when I do one of the um, ones that come with Photoshop that that does all the magic for you. However, um, they usually don't do that best of a job especially if your if your edges are not very pronounced so this is kind of kind of the way to go for me
Now I was thinking I could get rid of this little fin and by just going straight across and that way this is not going to be selected. But then I thought, wait, that if somebody was really looking at this and saw that fin missing, somebody that knows sharks, they would they would know that, hey, it's missing that fin that's important for a certain specific reason, you know, so uh, be mindful of that, you know, like, let's say you're masking uh, at some point, you know, somebody's pants that have like a few wrinkles on the side, it's okay to get rid of them. But if it's, you know, something important, um, just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and leave it. Now again, once you get to the end, you get that cursor with the little circle. So I connect that, and then if I right click, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see where is that? Make a selection, and I'm gonna hit OK. Let me zoom out. Let me go ahead and delete this curves layer. Uh, I don't need that anymore. No, I deleted the mask, so I wanted to delete the actual layer. Select yes. Uh, and let's go ahead and mask this uh, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create a layer mask. And that way I bring in everything as well. So click on my move tool, drag this over to here. And now I have my shark coming in like that. Let's go ahead and close in our close our shark. Don't save it. And let's go ahead and bring him in over here. I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. So Command T or Control T, and then I'm going to resize him. And let's see if I flip him over, if that does not look weird. So I'm going to right click and flip horizontal. And I actually kind of like this better. So I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And we have one more fish. Let's go ahead and bring him in. Uh, again, I'm going to resize them, command control T, and I'm going to flip them horizontal. That's what it looks like they're all they're all coming together, um, you know, from different angles. And then I'm going to create a layer mask for him. Let me name him uh, Clownfish. And I'm going to rename the shark layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and start blending in the uh, the edges. So I'm going to get my brush tool again with black and make sure my opacity is at 100 to start off with. Use my bracket, left or right bracket keys to make my brush bigger. And first step is just I'm going to get rid of the, the hard line completely first. And then what I'm going to do is lower my opacity somewhere between 10 and 20 and then make a big brush and start working it from the outside to blend to blend in that uh, that background image uh, the background of the clownfish so let's go ahead and click on the layer and I'm gonna select my move tool and bring him in a little bit maybe maybe I want this fish to come in a little over here again since I moved it, now I have this edge of the uh, mask. Uh, sorry, not the mask, the edge of the image. So I'm going to use uh, my mask again to to mask that away. So I'm going to get my brush tool. Again, this time go to 100. A little smaller. I don't want to make it too big where I start deleting the fish. Unless spe you specifically want to do that. So I'm going to undo that. Do this. And now make my brush bigger. And take my opacity down to about 10 between 10 and 20 and start masking that away now i'm going to go back into my darkening layer uh select my brush tool with black and maybe i'm going to up my opacity make my brush size bigger and start brushing a little bit of that black in uh lightly 
So let's see, my boat is kind of covered there. You really cannot tell what it is. So let's see if we could move the boat uh, anywhere else. So I'm gonna select my move tool. And maybe I don't need it. Let's turn that one back off. And now let's go ahead and I'm gonna bring this. I always like the texture of water. So I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna put it over, let's see over this darkening. And I'm gonna change the opacity, or sorry, change the blending modes and see if there's anything that I do like. So I think these fish are really popping when it's dark. So let's go to vivid light. Um, that's a good one that I like. And now let me rearrange the fish a little. So I'm gonna select my purple fish. I'm gonna do command or control T him a downward angle here, bring him in. Let me arrange my shark. Command T to resize it. Maybe he's over here. Take my purple fish and move him up here. Take my pink fish and resize him a little bit more. Maybe somewhere there. Now I'm going to want my um, my shark to pop a little bit more. So if you see, he's against a little bit blues here. So I'm going, going to um, put a layer, so select on the layer right under him. And then again, I'm going to make another darkening layer. So I'm going to add another layer, name it shark darkening. And then I'm going to get a brush. And this time I'm going to select uh, like one of these dark blues. So in order to, when I'm on my brush tool, if I hold option uh, or alt, option on a Mac, alt on a PC or Windows computer, I'm going to select one of these dark blues. So that lets me, that lets me select, uh, select any color. So see if I select here with the, where the tell is, that gave me like that reddish, um, that magenta color. So I'm gonna go ahead and select one of these dark blues. That's a purple, so if I double click here, you now I could take it back to like a dark blue, hit okay. And I'm gonna make sure I have a, a low opacity, somewhere between 10 and 20. And I'm just gonna start painting above here, just ever so slightly, just to make the shark pop again. And then I could change this blending mode to multiply and that's gonna, you know, darken that area. Now, if I wanted to add like a color cast over everything, I could just select the very top layer and I could always go to one of their, let's say photo filters, Maybe do photo filter. I could do a warming or a cooling filter. Um, so that one looks pretty cool. Uh, I could always bump it up. You don't wanna go too far um, unless it's giving you the effects that you want. So I'm gonna go up a little bit here so turn that off and on so I kind of like that then what I want to do is maybe use a levels um, a levels adjustment layer so you know make it a little darker here make it a little lighter so maybe something like that so Here's what those two layers did. So I made it a little brighter, a little cool. And that is it. So at this point I could go ahead and save it. Uh, save it whenever you're happy. Um, I'm gonna show you a few different collages that students have made. Uh, so at this point what you wanna do is once you save your Photoshop file, that's gonna be your working file. What you wanna do is go to File, Save As. And then go ahead and choose under Format. Uh, change it to a JPEG, leave the name the same, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And make sure you take this either up to maximum or drag this all the way up, and then go ahead and click save, and you are done. Um, so just to double check, if I go to my folders, uh, so my folder where my files are at, I have my Photoshop file of my collage, and then I have my uh, my JPEG. So the JPEG is the one that I want. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to ask me.
Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next tutorial.